Vote buying has always been a calling card of most corrupt governments in the world, from Latin America to Nigeria to Zimbabwe. It's a pretty simple transaction. The government gives you cash and you vote for them. This is a familiar territory in the third world. And speaking of the third world, we have a lot of these kinds of schemes in our country. Student loan uh, debt has been at the center of many of these schemes. And the schemes are always incredibly stupid. So, for example, three years ago, the government put a pause on student loan payments because of COVID. For some reason, COVID meant that you shouldn't have to pay your student debt back, um, even though you still had to pay all of your other types of debt. But student debt was an exception. And Biden, after taking office, proceeded to extend the pause and then extend it again and again and again and again until just yesterday. On Sunday, just 24 hours ago, Joe Biden's three-year quasi-loan forgiveness program came to an end. All of a sudden, as of yesterday, tens of millions of people who took out massive loans to pay for their college degrees, whether it was a degree in astrophysics or LGBTQIA plus studies or whatever it was, had to start once again making payments on those degrees. You might remember that uh, Joe Biden came out with what was supposed to be a more permanent loan forgiveness plan a few, uh, a few weeks before the last midterm election. He said that uh, the government would permanently forgive, quote unquote, up to $20,000 of federal student loan debt for borrowers. Um, a lot of voters believe that was true, even though the Biden administration knew the plan was never going to hold up in court. You can't just cancel debt. He had no authority to do it. Um, and uh, somebody in the end has to pay for it. That's the reality. And in this case, predictably, several states went to federal court saying that they have their own student loan programs, which were funded by tax dollars. And these states said that they stood to lose a lot of that money if the Biden administration's plan took effect. As the Supreme Court heard arguments on Joe Biden's plan this year, a swarm of blue and purple-haired activists popped up in Washington, D.C. They made a series of incoherent and, frankly, hilarious arguments in favor of this student uh, loan forgiveness plan. And here's just one of them, for example. Watch this. I get paid about $73,000 a year, more than I could have imagined as a young person. I was thrilled to start making a salary after grad school. I thought I'd be rich. And yet I am still drowning in debt. What's worse is it's considered less than many people's debt, only $30,000. I'm lucky compared to a lot of people to only have $30,000 of debt, which we have to admit is unacceptable, right? Right. Yes. This is absurd. Absurd, yes. Now, if you're paid $73,000 a year, that's a, that's a good salary in most of the country. A lot of people maintain households on far less money than this graduate student makes. In fact, she's making more than $10,000 above the median household income in states, like, uh, in states like Oklahoma and Louisiana and other states. But no sane person would ever think that seventy three dollars is ever going to make them rich. Unless you live in the year 1847 or something, seventy three dollars does not equate to being wealthy. So why would anyone presume that $70,000 is somehow going to make them wealthy in the year 2023? And perhaps most disturbingly, how did someone with this level of financial illiteracy manage to earn a graduate degree in the first place? The more you watch that video, the more depressing it gets. Uh, here you have a woman who earnestly believes that going through the motions and, and racking up degrees should lead inevitably to wealth. Because that's how you get wealthy. You check a bunch of boxes your whole life and you follow orders. You definitely don't innovate. You don't strike out on your own path. You don't do something different. No, you just follow the program. You go to the classes, you get the piece of paper that says degree, and abracadabra, wealth should just appear. This is the expectation. And shockingly for many people, it has not been met. And she's not alone. Here's an NBC News segment from a couple of days ago featuring a salon owner who's really upset that, she'll, that she uh, still owes $4,000 for her community college degree and that now she's going to have to start paying on it. Uh, let's watch that. After three years of a pandemic pause, the federal student loan repayments are set to restart Sunday, three months after the Supreme Court struck down President Biden's student loan forgiveness program. Now many people are facing thousands of dollars of debt and they say they still have no way of paying it back. NBC News business and data reporter Brian Chung has more. Josie Bridges is a single mom living paycheck to paycheck. It's hard enough dealing with rising prices at the store. My student payments are sitting right now at about $400 is what they're expecting each month. So, I mean, that's my food budget right there. The pandemic freeze on student loan payments allowed Josie to open up her own salon in Portland, Oregon. But with $4,000 in outstanding debt from her community college degree, she says she simply won't be able to make the payments once they resume in October. It's kind of out of my hands at this point. If I can't make it, I, I can't make it. It's a game changer. 
The Biden administration's plan to forgive up to $20,000 in student debt would have wiped Josie's slate clean. Instead, a challenge from six Republican states resulted in a Supreme Court decision in June striking down the plan after Josie had already put thousands of dollars in investments into her salon. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, and that's kind of scary. Now, you know, I'm a big uh, supporter of small businesses. I love it when people go out and do their own thing, start their own businesses, showing that entrepreneurial spirit that once made this country get great. But the message from this report seems to be that Josie uh, took major financial risks on the assumption that the government was just going to wipe away her debt. Unfortunately, the magic debt forgiveness fairy never arrived, and now she's stuck paying back the money that she decided to borrow in the first place. So it's hard to think of a better illustration of the fact that this pause on student loans was a self-defeating and ridiculous and pointless policy. You know, it's the quintessential example of the government kicking the can down the road, which is the only thing they ever do. And in response, predictably enough, many college grads kick the can down the road also. It's not like most of them have spent the intervening years saving money, you know, whether it's because of Biden's terrible economy or inflation uh, or their own reckless spending habits or some combination of these factors. Many of these college grads are now in the same spot they were in when the pause took effect, if not an even worse spot. Now the unpause button is pushed and nothing was accomplished. They're still broke and they're desperate for more handouts. Now, it's clear that the left is giving up their morals and any common sense. There's no better time than to build a daily habit of prayer and meditation. Building a habit of prayer can help you cultivate an attitude of gratitude. Focusing on what you're thankful for can increase positive emotions and improve overall well-being. Hollow is the number one Christian prayer app in the U.S. It's helped me maintain a daily prayer routine. It can help you to download the app for free at hollow.com slash Matt Walsh. You can set prayer reminders and track your progress along the way. Not sure where to start? Check out Father Mike Schmitz's Bible in a Year, available on the Hallow app for brief daily readings and reflections. Or pray alongside Mark Wahlberg, Jim Caviezel, and even some world-class athletes. With Hallow, you can customize a personal prayer plan that works for you. Listen wherever you are with downloadable offline sessions. Using Hallow to connect with others who share your beliefs and values can provide a sense of belonging, support, and foster a sense of community as well. Ultimately, we'll learn how we can become better individuals in spite of today's broken world as we strive to become more like Christ in our daily lives through prayer, fasting, and giving. Download Hallow at Hallow.com slash Matt Walsh and get an exclusive three months free. That's three months absolutely free at Hallow.com slash Matt Walsh. Social media right now is ripe with uh, videos from people panicking that they have to pay back their loans again. Many of them have advanced degrees. Some of them have multiple bachelor degrees. They've spent years and years and years accumulating degrees, and now the bill is due, and they're demanding that somebody wave the magic wand and make it all go away. And of course, what is the magic wand? Well, the magic wand is someone else's bank account because there is no loan forgiveness. There is only loan transfer. And they want their loans transferred from them to you. As I've argued for many years, this idea is flagrantly immoral. It's evil. You know, and it makes no sense. If it's somehow unjust to expect a college graduate to pay his own loans, then it is self-evidently much more unjust to expect someone else to pay his loans. Like someone has to pay the debt. And it only makes sense that the guy who owns the debt should pay it. Everyone, I think, intuitively understands this point when it comes to most types of debt, but college debt is somehow treated as an exception. That's because the whole scheme is just a form of upper-class welfare. Most student loan debt is held by high-wealth households. More than 60% of it is held by the rich and the upper class. People with graduate degrees account for a half of all uh, student debt. So these are, uh, for the most part, upper-class people. And they are looking to get bailed out and the bailout would inevitably come, in many cases, from people who, are, who have less money than they do. And while college grads try to reach their hands into your pocket to take your money to pay off their loans, the real villains in this story get off the hook completely. Villains like the university system itself, which is charging these exorbitant fees for what often turns out to be a useless education. These universities operate like hedge funds, but they're taxed like charities. They've been raising tuition for decades with the help of federally backed loans, and when the students default on those loans, the university owes nothing. The student or the taxpayers have to pay. We've also been letting employers off the hook, as I've pointed out many times. You know, we rarely blame them for needlessly requiring a degree for jobs that can just as easily be done by people without them. Corporate America and the education system, they have created this problem, yet they get none of the blame, and the working class is expected to pick up the bill. It's a tale as old as time. 
How many entry-level consultants or government bureaucrats really need a $200,000 bachelor's degree to work uh, you know, an Excel spreadsheet and send some emails? It's absurd. And that last point is the thing that I think is rarely mentioned in the student debt conversation, even though it's the most important point of all. As we see all these college grads weeping over their loan burden, and it is indeed an enormous burden, we rarely state the obvious, which is that most of these people never should have gone to college to begin with. We have people running around with multiple degrees who never needed one. There are people with master's degrees who could have been just as successful, if not more successful, with with nothing but a high school diploma. Now, yes, as already covered, some employers have created a sort of artificial demand for a degree, which means that if you don't go to college, you will not be eligible for those jobs, even though you can actually, you actually are more than eligible. Like you could do them, but artificially they're saying that you can't get in the door because you don't have the, the, the degree. But there are many other career paths that you can venture down where nobody cares if you have a degree. I am more financially successful than most people with doctorates, and my highest level of formal education is 12th grade. So it is possible to find success with, without a college degree. I know that from experience. Now, I'm not denying the hurdles that you'll find in your path if you decide to skip college and free yourself from the scam. I also know about those hurdles from experience as well. But the only real long-term solution to the student loan crisis, the only way to put an end to this lunacy, the only path out of this wilderness is for the majority of young people to abandon the university system entirely. That is the only way. And it's the one thing that we don't talk about when we have this conversation. I've been screaming it from the rooftops forever, but more people need to join in the chorus or nothing's going to get better. Because until that happens, until we see millions of young people going, the, just, just bypassing the university system completely, they graduate high school and they bypass the system completely and they go out and they live their lives and they get jobs and they and they do something else. Until that happens, tuition will not go down at all. It's only going to go up because there's no incentive for it to go down. The university, why would they why would they lower tuition? They know that you could just, you know, they know the parents are going to shuffle their kids into the colleges anyway. They know that you're going to you'll pay anything. And so they're going to keep raising the the, the tuition. There's no incentive. And corporate America will continue needlessly demanding degrees for jobs that a well-trained monkey could perform because, again, they have no incentive to stop demanding it. As long as we go along with the program, the program will not change. That's the simple reality. If people reject the program and they reject the programming, the student debt crisis will eventually become a moot point, a thing of the past. This is really the only path forward. And it's the only way that we will really ever be able to say that the student debt problem is canceled. Hey, YouTube, thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like access to my full show with no ads, you should go to dailywire.com and use promo code Walsh to get two months free on all annual plans. See you there.